has been suggested also that this movement uh, preaches a gospel of violence. That no, they, the black uh, people in this country have been the victims of violence at the hands of the white man for 400 years. And following the ignorant uh, Negro preachers, we have thought that it was godlike to turn the other cheek to the brute that was brutalizing us. And today, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is showing black people in this country that just as the white man and every other person on this earth has God-given rights, natural rights, civil rights, any kind of rights that you can think of when it comes to defending himself, black people should have, we should have the right to defend ourselves also. And because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad makes black people brave enough, men enough to defend ourselves no matter what the odds are, the white man runs around here with the, with the doctrine that we are, Mr. Muhammad is advocating uh, 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 violence when he's actually telling Negroes to defend themselves against violent people. I see. Well, uh, the Reverend Martin Luther King preaches a doctrine of nonviolent insistence upon the rights of the American Negro. What is your attitude toward the, this the, philosophy? The white man pays Reverend Martin Luther King, subsidizes Reverend Martin Luther King, so that Reverend Martin Luther King can continue to teach the Negroes to be defenseless. That's what you mean by nonviolent. Be defenseless. Be defenseless in the face of one of the most cruel uh, beasts that has ever taken the people into captivity. That's this American white man. And they have proved it throughout the country by the police dogs and the police clubs. A uh, hundred years ago, they used to put on a white sheet and use a bloodhound against Negroes. Today, they have taken off the white sheet and put on police uniforms. They've uh, traded in the bloodhounds for police dogs, and they're still doing the same thing. And just as Uncle Tom, back during slavery, used to keep the Negroes from resisting the bloodhound or resisting the Ku Klux Klan by teaching them to, to love their enemy or pray for those who use them despitefully. Today, uh, Martin Luther King is just a 20th century or modern Uncle Tom or a religious Uncle Tom who is doing the same thing today to keep Negroes defenseless in the face of attack that Uncle Tom did on the plantation to keep those Negroes defenseless in the, in the face of the attack of the Klan in that day. But the goal of Dr. King is full equality no. and full rights of citizenship for Negroes. The goal of Dr. Martin Luther King is to give Negroes a chance to sit in a segregated restaurant we took beside the same white man who had brutalized them for 400 years. The goal of Dr. Martin Luther King is to get Negroes to forgive the people who have brutalized them for, uh, for 400 years by, by lulling them to sleep and making them forgetting what those whites have done to them. But the masses of black people in America today don't go for what Martin Luther King is, is putting down. As you said in one of your articles, it's psychologically insecure, something of that sort. I forget how you put it. But you didn't endorse what Martin Luther King was doing yourself. Uh, I do not reject his goals of full integration and full equality rights for American citizens. Do you reject these If you goals? don't think that he's walking on the right road, I'm quite sure you don't agree that he'll get to the right place. And if you would classify uh, his method as uh, psychologically unrealistic, I think that uh, if a man's method is psychologically unrealistic, which means the road or the means or the method that he's using, I think as a psychologist, you, you'd be very doubtful that he would reach the right goal. There is one correction, uh, Minister Malcolm, I'd like to make here. In that same piece that you're quoting from, I said that he, his methods are effective. His philosophy of love of the oppressor, I thought, was psychologically burdensome. 